Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Yes, I, I think most children ended up with at least one little golden book. I know I had a lot. I think I had even more than what I have now, barring what I might end up picking up at a used bookstore. But hey, to continue with things that I still own for some reason. <laughs> Today we have another licensed little golden book. Tweety plays catch the putty tat. I did. I did see a putty cat. Cat. Jesus. It's tat. Yes. By Eileen Daly. Illustrated by Peter Alvarado and William Lorenz. Sorry, William L O R E N C Z. I think I better find that putty tat, Tweety decided. He's always trying to catch me, so I'm safer if I know where he is. He flew down to the floor, hoping to see Sylvester curled up in his favorite snoozing place. But Sylvester was in the kitchen, and he seemed very busy. Tweety peeked around the corner. Huh, I did not expect Sylvester to be cooking what looks to be a pancake. Very nicely illustrated, though. The posing's good. Nice exaggeration. He definitely does look happy. Big red nose. Also, I just realized this book once again confirmed that Tweety is male at this period of time. Because that has been a big question for a while, which gender Tweety is. Fun fact, Tweety has actually been predominantly male, but he has been female at times. There was even a joke in one of the recent animated series with Tweety and that Tweety goes to a birdhouse that has the male and female over it for the bathroom. He flies into the male side, then comes back and goes, well, I guess that's confirmed. The face looks a little off to me for Sylvester. The muzzle seems rather elongated. Also, old-fashioned coffee pot. The worst way in the world to make coffee. Yep. Where you just put the grounds in there with the water and you boil the crud out of it. Please don't do that to your coffee. Even if you're camping, please don't do that. This has been a PSA from Ember. Hmm. We changed fonts here for Tweety's speech powder. On the first page, they put it in an alternate text font, and they're using two different fonts here, one for him speaking and one for him thinking. Also, I make no guarantees about the consistency of my Tweety voice across the story. Well, I must say it's been really good so far. Yeah, but now we've paused to talk about the book, which means I've had time to think about it. We. I wonder what that putty tat is baking, said Tweety to himself. It smelled very tasty. Then he heard Sylvester call, Tweety! Tweety Bird! I've got a present for you! Oh goody, thought Tweety. The putty tat wants to be friends again. He flew into the kitchen. What's my present? he asked. Bird seed flapjacks, said Sylvester. Made just for you. He flipped one quickly into the air, and it fell plop right on Tweety. Oh! cried Tweety. My flapjack is too big. Not for me, said Sylvester. It's just right with a Tweety bird inside. He pounced, but the flapjack and Tweety disappeared under the stove. Just as energetic as our cartoons. Tweety and Sylvester, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner, uh, Bugs Bunny and everyone else. All the violence that used to be allowed in cartoons. Uh. Though cartoons weren't initially marketed to children, so hey. The art is very nice. I like it. There's like, that characters have outlines, but their the outlines are toned to accent and not just solid black lines. Very energetic. That was a naughty putty tat, said Tweety. I would like to be friends with you, but you make it so hard. No harm meant, Tweety, said Sylvester. I just like to play catch the Tweety bird. Let's play catch the putty tat for a little while, suggested Tweety. But Sylvester just yawned and fell asleep. Tweety escaped from under the stove and flew up to the attic. So it's just a game on the predator's part, so it's all okay. It was just a joke. Just because he's lying there dead in the ground means nothing. But I'm a necromancer. I can bring him back. Why is everyone giving me that look? I really do need a wasp from that putty tat, he said as he perched on a birdcage. But how can I make him stop chasing me? Well, that one was actually written in normal speech. Then Tweety looked into the cage and had an idea. 
He searched the attic and finally found just what he wanted, a paper bird hanging from a string. Tweety put the paper bird far back inside the cage. Putty Tap will think the bird is a real one. He will have to go inside to get it, and I will twap him in the bird cage. Tweety hid beside the open bird cage door. Then he began to sing. Soon he heard Sylvester call, Tweety, did I hear you up there? How convenient that he found a bird that looks just like him, made out of paper. Not just like him, the eyes are the wrong color. Yeah, but pretty much everything else. Suddenly, Sylvester spied the cage and inside what he thought was a bird. Aha! he exclaimed and pounced into the open cage. Tweety slammed the door shut. Aha yourself, he said. Now you can't get out and I will have a rest. A rest, eh? said Sylvester after a minute. Well, keep your eyes open, Tweety. I think you are about to see a cage walking. Interesting. This Sylvester seems a little bit smarter than the one in the show. Well, depending on when the cartoons were produced, the overall personalities of characters did change, along with the animation styles. Hmm. Sylvester put his legs through the wires and walked away to find a wire cutter. Soon he had cut his way out and was again chasing poor Tweety. Tweety tat, Tweety puffed, out of breath. I am getting so very sleepy. I wish you would go away for a long time. Later, Tweety asked himself, what would make him go away? Something scary, maybe. While Sylvester was sleeping, Tweety thought and thought. That pretty tad is pretty brave, recalled Tweety. It will take something really scary to frighten him away. It's really interesting how the art corresponds to certain parts of the paragraph or page. And then there's these transition phrases in the words where we get little pieces of story without art between them. Although this illustration of Tweety, like, I'm thinking and pointing at something? I'm not quite sure how that's, like, I know it's, I've got an idea, but I'm not quite sure what the other hand's doing and what it's indicating, the one that's not pointing towards Tweety's mind. I know, he said. I'll be a witch, a scary witch. That should make the Pretty Tat go away for a long time. Tweety made himself look like a scary witch. He flew over Sylvester's head. Swish! Woo! called the Tweety Witch. Sylvester opened one eye. Then he opened the other. What was that? he asked, standing up and looking around. A cameo. Because <laughs> uh, I was just thinking about the other witch. That doesn't look like Witch Hazel. No, but it made me think of that, so I thought, cameo would be a fun joke. And a nice illustration of Sylvester going, what? Huh? Who? And Tweety flying away wearing a mask and a cape. Hmm. A cape? Yes. What does it have to do with the witch? I guess it's scarier. Also disguises his shape a little bit. Ah. Uh -huh. A witch, said the Tweety witch. A witch, eh? Said Sylvester. You're a very small witch, aren't you? Well, yes, said the Tweety witch. But you know what small witches do, don't you? What? asked Sylvester, backing away just a little bit. We cast spells. Bad ones. We can change cats into tiny mice. Into mice? Can you uh, really do that? asked Sylvester, backing away a little faster. I, I like the expression over here, like, uh, can you really do that? <laughs> Like, excuse me, sir. You know, one hand up, one finger. Similar to the other drawing of Tweety, I guess that was the similar action of what they were playing with. And then we cut over to Sylvester and the other page, talking directly to the witch, Tweety, getting right up in his face. I also realize that is a very, very colorful carpet. I can't imagine that anyone actually has that carpet outside of Rainbow Castle. It's my favorite spell, said the Tweety Witch. I'll show you. He began to wave his broom. No, don't, shouted Sylvester, and he ran out the door and through the gate. I'm starting the spell, said the Tweety Witch, as he flew just above Sylvester's ear. One, two, ka-zip, ka-zip. Sylvester ran faster, so fast that he didn't see where he was going. Uh-oh. I think this is going to be painful. Yeah, yeah, cartoon physics often is.
Look out! shouted Tweety, but it was too late. Sylvester was right at the edge of a pond. He couldn't stop, so he took a mighty leap and landed beside a big rock. After a minute, he climbed up on the rock. He looked back and saw Tweety, who had taken off his witch mask. Tweety! exclaimed Sylvester. Then he said, I... I knew it was you the whole time. Shh. Uh, a cat trying to save face. Very funny. Also, what's with the boat? Is it supposed to be a boat number nine, and the other side's a number nine faded to indicate it's on the other side facing the other direction? Probably. Are you all white, pretty tat? Tweety called. No, said Sylvester. Cats don't like water. Help me. Some cats like water. Tigers like water. Yeah, it really depends on the cat. Even yeah. house cats. There's some house cats that are like, Oi, I had this one cat. Not afraid of water at all. Would just walk casually through the rain. And then I had this other cat that I swear was a ninja. It would be pouring down right outside. Cat would come in dry. And you're like, what did you do? Dodge the raindrops. Other cat comes in. Drowned rat. Meow. Looks at me and goes, Oh, I need to dry you, don't I? Meow. <laughs> Sylvester pointed to the shore. Sail that little boat over and rescue me. I don't think he'd fit. He knew. Buoyancy only works so much. But Tweety wouldn't do it. You were a naughty putty tat, he said, and he flew home, leaving Sylvester marooned. For a little while, Tweety was happy all by himself. Then a strange thing happened. He grew lonesome. Never thought I'd miss that pesky putty tat, he said to himself. Even miss being chased. Stockholm Syndrome, anyone? I was just about to say that. <laughs> Finally, he flew back to see how Sylvester was getting along. And what did Tweety find? Sylvester was even more lonesome than Tweety. Poor Putty Tat, said Tweety. If I rescue you, will you promise not to play chase all at the time? I promise, I promise, said Sylvester. So Tweety sailed the little boat over to the rock, and Sylvester sailed it back. And the next day, Sylvester chased Tweety only twice. Once before breakfast, and once before dinner. Good way to work up an appetite. And then he ate a can of cat food. If he can find the can opener. Yeah. That, that tends to be the thing in cartoons like that. All this food, and no a can opener. They give me something like that. It's kind of like that episode of The Twilight Zone. I finally had time. It was finally time. Oh, no. Horribly depressing, horribly depressing. <laughs> That's why I never want to need glasses. <laughs> uh, and then there's me who probably figures something out. Well, I'm sure he could have figured out something as well because everything was still there. He couldn't have gone to an ophthalmologist shop and figured out a pair of glasses, but you know, for the sake of the story, it worked better that way. So did you have fun? It was very awkward to read in voices. Some of the words would be off and then some of the sentences would be completely normal. So that was kind of odd. The cover is nice. It's Tweety basically saying something to Sylvester while Sylvester's in the cage that was mentioned in the story. And he just looks, uh hum. Yeah. So this has been A Little Golden Book, Tweety Plays Catch the Putty Tat by Eileen Daly, illustrated by Peter Alvarado and William L-O-R-E-N-C-Z. Not even going to try, William. We respect names like that too much. <laughs> we don't want to butcher things, even though I do that pronunciation to the English language all the time. Yeah, we haven't figured out how to shut Lux up, so that's going to continue. I have my own podcast. I have, like, even though I have 100 subscribers, we have two active people in the comments. Woohoo! Thanks again for listening. If you enjoyed this, there are lots of other Embers Reading Room, including an entire playlist of little golden books. Also, we have things separated by... Hmm, how do we have things separated? Well, there's the Whisper books, there's the Serendipity books, there's an entire playlist from my bedtime book of two-minute stories... If you want something that's not book related, you know, there's the main channel too. Lux gets to talk more in those ones. But he also draws pretty pictures, so. At least I attempt to draw pretty pictures. They get likes on DeviantArt. 
I was also able to say, some people say I succeed. <laughs> huh. Want to track down a copy of this book? We'll try to post an Amazon link if we can find it. Just feel like going shopping? Yes, I know that has nothing to do with books unless you go shopping for a book, a reading light, reading glasses, or a comfortable place to sit, or something to drink while you're reading. I will not say eat. If you do that, please don't let me know. <laughs> Ebates and Amazon are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening.